Hi, this is Karen Ovid in the Quilt Rambler coming to you today once again from the Quilt Rambler studio with my 15 minutes to ramble and sew. Now when I started this little adventure, I wasn't sure how often I'd be able to do this. I thought maybe once a week on Sunday afternoons, but one thing I've learned is that I'm consistently inconsistent. So today is episode five and this is February 25th, a beautiful day here in Houston and let's ramble and sew. I am working on a little teeny tiny project. Uh, this is a little four patch that's going to be a um, square and a square. And this is what I'm gonna sew on today while we're rambling. Uh, the last few weeks I have really been busy um, with some secret sewing. And that's one reason why I haven't been able to ramble and sew because what I was sewing on, I, I couldn't show you. Um, I think you remember that I have been working with Island Boutique and I have a signature line coming out this fall and I'm going to be um, designing uh, three new patterns to go with the signature line. And as, as I've mentioned before, I didn't design the fabric. I'm just supporting it with my pattern designs as well as I do have um, four members of my design team who we will talk about them uh, as time gets closer introduce you to them and their designs but anyway um, I think if I'm not mistaken the last time we sewed or uh, recently when we sewed I shared with you um, this back of this fabric and this is the back of quilt number one I finished it uh, this last week it's quilted it's not bound yet I'll give you a sneak you see the orange? A little bit of orange. Just a little bit of orange. And of course there is lime green on the front and a few other colors. Um, I like to keep a jar of my trimmings. It's kind of weird, but I do. So you can see the colors that were here in my first quilt. And then now I'm switching to more colors in the line. And this is the second quilt that I'm working on right now. Not, not right now, but right now on the other side of the studio. And it's just been so much fun. And it's so hard to keep this under wraps. But I can't wait. I can't wait to share with you guys. Uh, and I don't want to wish my life away because this is February and I can't show it till November. So we've got a lot of sewing and a lot of rambling to do between now and then. Can you see the little temptation package here? That is a reminder of good things to come because inside each of those packages, uh, which is one yard of fabric, by the way, uh, either my light or my dark, Inside each of those packages is 20 fat quarters, one each from the uh, collection. So I can't wait until I can show that and uh, do a little giveaway. But in the meantime, um, let me think, what have I been working on? Um, last Sunday was the Daytona 500, and in this household, that's a whole lot more important than the Super Bowl. Sorry guys, but that's just the way we roll around here. And if you watch the Daytona 500, you know it didn't take place on Sunday. It was rained out and finished on Monday. And so I did come in and do some sewing, but like I said, I was doing some of my secret sewing. And that's when I determined that, you know, Sundays are my day to, to worship first and then in the afternoons to do something fun. And sewing is always fun, whether I'm sewing for a deadline or whether I'm sewing this mystery quilt or whatnot. But with the, um, the videoing, as much fun as it is just to you know, talk to a camera and pretend like somebody's listening, um, the time I, I tried to you know, download it and upload it and all that kind of stuff, Sunday kind of became a work day. And I thought that's defeating my purpose. The purpose is to ramble and sew and share with people uh, and not make it like work because we all need some time of rest. Rest doesn't always mean taking a nap, although today would have been a beautiful day to take a nap. It's been cloudy around here lately. I mean, I'm talking depressing cloudy. Uh, my family kind of knows to stay out clear of me when we don't have good weather. Uh, too many days of it and I am not a happy camper. Um, but today, today it's 65 and sunny and when I was out running my errands um, I got a little goofy because you know sunshine just does that to me especially when I've missed it for so long then I, I played around with you know doing a little um, uh, monologue with myself driving and doing errands and stuff just to have something to do 
and trying to think about what I might want to talk about this afternoon when I had a chance to ramble and sew. Um, and I didn't really think of anything. I'm still just rambling. But I have had a good, a good week or two. I really don't remember them. And I think part of it is because it was cloudy and yucky. And like I said, I do have that that sad thing it stands for seasonal something disorder i never can remember what the a stands for but it's one of those things that people that don't get enough sunlight um you know have have problems and i've always said i could never live in seattle where it rained all the time and don't take me to alaska during the six months of of winter and no sun because i, I wouldn't make it six days uh, but anyway so I don't really remember the last couple of weeks except for the fact that that's one reason why I do have my studio with my island feel. Um, I'm known to when you have a workshop with me I have I think it's six or eight hours of steel drum uh, music so you sound like you're in Jamaica. Um, you know things like that just kind of make me happy and and the background noise, um, the stories, I get lost in audibles um because it's really weird but if i'm talking um talking to you on the camera or if i'm talking on the phone or if i'm listening to audibles um, i'm engaged and i i tend to focus more on what i'm doing even driving you know if i'm if i'm driving and talking with with you know a passenger i'm engaged i can actually focus almost better on the road because i'm my mind's not wandering so anyway, I'm just wired, wired differently, I guess, and, and God made us all different. So uh, if we were all the same, it would be a very boring world, wouldn't it? Um, what else have I been doing besides Secret Sewing? Well, I've been working on this, this project, like I mentioned. I think I shared this one of the first weeks, but this was like Clue One, and this is made with the Wedge Star. This was week six, and all I had done was Clue One. So I decided I kind of needed to get my rear and gear and get going. So the other day I made a, a lot of beautiful little wedge stars uh, or diamond wedges or whatever these things are called. And clue, clue six would have been a really easy one to share with you today because I would have just cut this gorgeous fabric up to put next to those, but I didn't get that far. Uh, what I did do was make all these little teeny tiny four patches, trim them down with a, the square square tool and I've added the sides, the black on uh, my background sides, and now I'm adding, you know, my scrappy colors. And I like this. I'm having fun. It's really scary almost to do a mystery. I've never done a mystery before. And the fact that um, I don't know what's going to look like. And how did I do on my colors? Did I pick things out well or not? So I just figured, you know, if, if it's fabric that I like, then hey, it's going to go together. It's going to play nice together. I realize there's a whole lot more to color theory than I'll ever be able to really comprehend, but if I like it and I'm happy making it, then that's all that's really important. I recently learned of something. I shared this on my blog this week, so if you're seeing this um, later than February 2020, go back to my blog, thequiltrambler.com, and look for... Um, the blog post in February that says inventory quilt project. I learned of this just recently. There is a large group on Facebook as well as on Instagram. So if you're, you know, not a Facebook person, you may be an Instagram person or vice versa. But there's a group called Just Want a Quilt. I got in touch with them uh, last year at Market and Festival because it's actually, if I had the story right, was started by. Um, concerning copyrights and trademarks for quilters. In fact, yeah, here's the book. Oh, I bought this little book, A Little Bit of Copyright. And this is written by uh, Dr. Elizabeth Townsend Gard, and she's, I think, the one that started Just Want a Quilt. She's a professor at Tulane Law School, and she's helping quilters understand uh, copyright. And we, you know, that's always been my big beef is if I'm taking a class, I need to purchase the book or purchase the pattern uh, because when you Xerox it and share with your friends, you're actually not only breaking the law, but, but you're taking food out of somebody's mouth. Um, now as a designer of patterns, I think I'm, I'm not more aware of it. I've always been aware of it. 
but I want to stress it without sounding, you know, like I'm the quilt police. But people are out here making a living designing quilts for your quilting pleasure. And every time you re-engineer something off of Pinterest or um, you copy a pattern with a friend, seriously, you are taking food out of someone's mouth because that's how people, you know, make their living. And yeah, there's a lot of quilts that are very simple and a lot of people very smart can reverse engineer and, and you know, a log cabin is a log cabin I and mean, there's some things, but kind of be mindful of that when you're, when you're working with quilts, um, that you're not infringing on someone's copyright and keep the designers designing, you know, uh, I appreciate it, especially those that buy my patterns. Uh, but that wasn't where I was going with this whole ramble. What I wanted to tell you was I hooked up with them on this inventory quilt project. Uh, I didn't know what an inventory quilt was. I'm, you know, when I think of inventory, I think of when I used to work retail and, you know, the end of the year we had to count everything. Uh, that's really hard to do in a quilt shop when you have to count all the fabric, but I've had to do that too. But no, that's not really what uh, the gist of the, of the project is. It was started by a girl who on Instagram is known as Jessica Quilts. And I, I went on, on Instagram yesterday and to follow her, and she's got some beautiful creations. Anyway, Jessica came up with this um, idea of working through her inventory. Now, some people call it working through their stash. You can call it what you want. But what she was doing was purposely using fabric that she already had in inventory to make quilts. And some people will take, you know, and make scrap quilts, or some would actually say, I'm gonna use all of my blues and make a quilt. Or I'm gonna use um, only fat quarters or only this or that. And this Just Want a Quilt group came up with the idea of an inventory quilt project, and they approached different designers to see if they would be interested in offering some of their patterns that could be used as an inventory quilt. Well, of course I said yes. I mean, I want to be involved with stuff and I think it's kind of cool to, to quilt along with people and these are some things that, that's why I'm doing a mystery class. Okay, I actually started about 10 minutes till, so even though the timer is going off, I'm gonna wrap it up as soon as that thing quits dinging. Um, I'm really trying hard to keep it to 15 minutes, y'all, but it, you know, without somebody zapping me and telling me, cut, um, I'm gonna run over. But anyway, going back really to this inventory quilt thing, um, I'm going to be doing my pattern Geese Over Galveston Bay because that uses about, I think, 80 different um, blocks to be able to make those flying geese. And for my inventory quilt, I have a lot, a lot of scraps, but what I want to do is I want to use fabrics that's left over from all of my patterns uh, because I have eight or nine patterns out now plus the ones I'm working on. And I think it would be really cool to have one quilt that's my memory quilt that, oh, that was in Geese Over Gallison Bay, or oh, that came from Illuminated Journey. Oh, that's, I loved that fabric in, in Enchanted Stars. And so that's what I'm gonna do with my inventory quilt. And my month is May. Um, I'm not sure exactly how everything works yet. You know, it's kind of a work in pro progress for me. But if my understanding is I'll be chatting a lot in May, <laughs> probably a lot between now and then, but chatting a lot in May and sharing um, my project using, you know, my pattern and stuff. So go to the, go to the website, uh, Just Want a Quilt. Uh, they have a website. They're on Facebook. They're on Instagram. And find out a little bit more about it and join me on that process. Okay, let's wrap it up. I showed you my scraps. Did I show you my finished bowls? We did those a couple of weeks ago. I actually had a couple more and I uh, did something kind of out of character. I, I gifted a few because I tend to like to really keep my things because they make me happy. So I actually shared. Um, I had set up my table with my, my iron because I wasn't sure how far I'd get on this and whether I needed to press or not. So I'll use that as a moment to um, tell you a little bit about the Olesto. It's my favorite iron. And it's the one that when you pick it up and put it down, it goes up and down. And right now it's not doing that because it's not plugged in. I found that even though it has an auto shut off after so many minutes, I would leave it on by accident at night. So I made a little sign and uh, 
think of Jeff Foxworthy. Here's your sign. Yeah, I'm, I'm dumb. I need a sign. So I put this sign by my toothbrush. So when I go to bed at night, if the sign is still by the toothbrush, it means I forgot to turn the iron off. If I've turned it off, I bring the sign back in here and set it beside the iron. So maybe that little tip will be worth the 15 minutes of ramble and so. Uh, I do appreciate you joining me. And if there's some things that you'd like to talk about, uh, please do leave comments and send me an email. You can contact me through my website, thequiltrambler.com. There's a contact us form. Uh, but I'd like to, to chat with you and let's see what you're doing. So let's talk quilts together, okay? See you next time we ramble and sew. Thanks for watching. Bye. Camera fail. <laughs> okay. <laughs>